my practice is focused on a single vision, to have my own roadside attraction. I am a hermit by nature, but with a social calling. I want to believe that an inward journey is a viable path for, be for becoming an active member of society. So I wrestled with this conundrum for 10 years as a painter, until at last I became so desperate to move into the public realm that I resolved to build a cabinet for this painting and take it out into the world, far from gallery walls, and expose, them, expose it to random passers-by. So I built the cabinet, the tent followed, and I headed to Death Valley for my first attempt. I had this vague vision of a remote encounter with a complete stranger, where my art would be viewed as a tool rather than as an object. Strangers and visions are inverse equivalents of inward and outward journeys, and I wanted to provide a meeting place at the crossroads of these two divergent paths. But no one stopped. People whiz by, you can't see the whole image, oh sorry, there's a big long stretch, and people whiz by at 80 miles an hour and nobody mysteriously walked out of the desert, but I was relieved because I didn't know what I was going to say anyway. But I did realize that I needed to repress my fear of everyday people and head back into the city where there was a pedestrian culture I could engage. The roadside show and tell developed into a space for me to invite collaboration and try out new tools for engaging the public in internal processes, like the priority pie chart, interlocking cogs of people's priorities, and the archetype wheel, which participants spun for the archetype and then were dressed to embody it for a free photo. After, after two years of roadside show and tell projects, I realized that what was compelling me the most was the opportunity to go into different neighborhoods and interact with people who I wouldn't normally interact with. So I decided to simplify and see what I could do with just one sign. I made a sign out of chalkboard fabric and I could change the sign. Um, this developed into the Neighborhood Sign Club with collaborators Megan Saperstein and Leanne Martin. We had prepared blank sign boards and provide a space for passersby to paint something about themselves or their neighborhood, and then post them as a neighborhood portrait. So finally, I was doing this while I was also working on other things. So finally, I was ready to leave the Bay Area with the roadside show and hotel and head out across the country um, looking for lost America. Not necessarily a lost America, but one that was hidden from popular cu cu uh, culture. I only got as... Um, I only got as far as Oklahoma, however, before I grew tired of the tent. And it was, it was just too efficient. I would look around and see places that I could insert myself into. I was tied to one sot, and there was much more that I wanted to investigate. So I got a business card, which somehow gave me the official capacity to start inserting myself into other people's lives. For example, at the Dowsers Convention in Vermont, they allowed me to set up this space to interview and film water diviners about their craft. This is a lost skill. To this day, I won't feel completely exonerated for the deception my business card produced until I do something with the incredible footage that I collected here. Really incredible. Um, I spent eight months on this solar journey, poking my head into other people's lives and gaining a broader picture of what it means to be an American. The tour created the headspace I aimed to achieve with a roadside attraction intense bursts of contact with people I've never met before, and long expanses of solitude to process my experiences as I traveled. This is, these are Hopi Kachina carvers um, at Old Arabi, the oldest continuously lived in um, settlement in the United States. Once home, my interest in American history and nomadic culture deepened with the Beautiful Possibility Project. I took the overlooked histories I had collected on my first tour and created a new traveling e exhibition based on um, sideshow banners and developed a more, more defined roles for myself. This time, leaving the tent behind, I organized a tour to over 26 nonprofit venues across the United States and Canada, from rural, rural and Native American tribal centers to artist-run spaces and museums. An important takeaway from this tour was the hundreds of surveys I was able to collect on a once popular 19th century nervous disorder called Americanitis. Particip participants were given a brief history um, and asked if Americanitis was recognizable today and to opine on, on possible symptoms, causes, and cures, which most people did with great fervor and little prompting. <laughs> the surveys were not limited to these spaces. Um, 
um, because I figure that's one demographic, even though it's different parts of the country. Um, I would sometimes organize a bike brigade to go out into the community to collect surveys, and, or if I was in a remote spot, I might pull out the survey as well. Um, I have long, I've since logged all these handwritten surveys into a program for cross-examination and started illustrating the data as hand-painted charts. This and my ongoing interest in connecting strangers is forming the foundation for a new focus on the social laboratory as a brick-and-mortar cultural apothecary. With this in mind, I've been looking for more opportunities to start building environments. At a recent four-month residency at Recology, a large studio wood shop and unlimited resources, the dump, allowed me to play at having my own roadside attraction. Inspired by the early origins of museums that merged science, metaphysics, and art in wonderful collections of curiosities, I mined the San Francisco dump for cultural ephemera and presented it back to the public as a wall-sized windowcomer. So this cabinet was activated um, as a performative piece that I'd walk across, and only three of the 25 doors opened at a time, revealing vignettes of our discarded curiosities. And last, at a, a commission at the New Children's Museum, uh, at the New Children's Museum in San Diego, uh, it allowed me to work with an engineer and build a space as a conceptual idea. Um, this four-story steel-framed structure was based on a cell phone tower and skinned with reclaimed, salvaged, and hand-harvested materials. It merged San Francisco's dichotomous obsessions with advanced communication technologies and the desire to slow down and get back to the land. Each facade on each level of this climbable tower represents different peoples and eras of Northern California history and is activated with low technology communication devices like speaking tubes and pulley systems. Okay, the piece which is still up is called Reconnecting to Home, looking backwards at forward thinking, and this pretty much sums up uh, what I do.